Think about it, though. Why would the IRS even, I mean, if I read the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Well, how did the IRS get involved with these people? And if you think I'm wrong, go type in the IRS in churches, or go type in the IRS in religion and stuff, and oh my gosh, I lose my tax-free status. Come on, is this not getting into religion? So here we have, we've allowed, once again, people to circumvent or to basically take out from us or away from us our rights. And because we're not willing to stand up or sit in this chair and tell other people and motivate them to start understanding that liberty is not free. Freedom is not free. It takes an effort by you, the viewer, to wake up and say, you know what, I'm willing to fight for the First Amendment of the Constitution. Because I have family, I have loved ones, and I want them not only to be heard, but I want them to exercise whatever religion they want. I want them to have the right to regret, redress their government for grievances. Hmm. So we got truth squads with Obama, that's right, using what? Police to threaten people. We now have laws that once again try to limit and control the people, where before the laws that were created that made this nation the great nation, which it is to this day, okay, that constitution did what? It limited government. It didn't limit the people. Rather interesting, huh? How they've turned that around on you? Kind of like the words when they went from bailout to this is a rescue plan. So we'll go a little, we'll, we'll roll with that. Once again, thinking with the free speech thought and the freedom of religion and the freedom of press so that you can see things. And the reason I was concerned with press and mass media, and I call it the mass manipulated media, is because now six corporations control 95% of what you see and hear and read. That's the way you wanted it? You just want the opinions of a couple of banksters, in this case, globalist banksters? Kind of a shame. So since I'm mentioning banksters and I'm always already getting negative on the show, we'll go into the bailout thing. All right. Do you remember when you were a kid or you see on television, you, you see the people do the shell game? You know, you lift up and you're looking for the thing under the shell. It's under one of those shells, right? So around and around and around the shells go, and you've got to keep track of who's, you know, where's my little pee, where's my thing? Hmm. So I look at this and I say, well, while I'm paying attention to this shell, because that's the 700 billion that I'm told, oh my gosh, you know, they call it a bailout, but you and I both know it's just stealing from the poor and giving it to Wall Street bankers. And we'll go over it how and why that thing, yet they're going to blame it on you because of those subprime mortgages, which is nothing compared to the, you know, compared to what they were doing. But here we are paying attention to this shell because we believe it's the one that's got the P under it, 700 billion. But last week, that's right. The week that Congress said no to the bailout or whatever, that week, the Federal Reserve created $930 billion. Did you get me? $930 billion in one week. But you didn't hear that on the news, did you? AP reported it, but you didn't hear it, did you? You're watching that $700 billion, aren't you? But they created from nothing, from the ether around us. They created $930 billion. That same time that week, right, while you were paying attention to that $700 billion, the other shells, let's look under there. Hey, we just allocated a trillion dollars to the Department of Defense. Well, $930 billion plus a trillion. That's a lot, isn't it? That's more than this shell, isn't it? Rather interesting, huh? But you were paying attention to that shell, that bailout shell. More importantly, it's almost like I put a fourth shell out there. And what's under that fourth shell? And this was the key, and this is what you probably missed, and you should have woken up. And that is when we rolled out over, we noticed, hey, in this bill, why is there an amnesty clause? Why would they need an amnesty clause? Well, is it because they're now taking an unelected official, the Treasury Secretary, in this case, the dirtbag from Goldman Sachs, Bankster, and, uh, He's going to have what kind of power? The power to acquire any bank, sell its assets, even if they're not even in trouble. And why amnesty? So that they can't be taken to court. It can't be heard in any court in this country. Do you believe that? Find out if I lie. Okay? More importantly, this is not even an elected official. Now, before Congress was the only group of the government who could authorize the spending of money. 
when I say authorize the spending, they could give money to the FDA and the FDA could spend it to buy vehicles, whatever they wanted. But Congress was the one who would say, hey, we're going to take this money and we're going to go give it to these groups. Now we don't even have Congress. We don't need them anymore because we have a Treasury Secretary. He can now what? Take in money, acquire banks, and give the banks and the money and the assets to all his buddies. And if you think he's not going to, then you don't know anything about bank consolidation. <laughs> this is a consolidation of wealth. I hate to bum you out. It's your wealth. And they're going to consolidate you right out of the picture. But look who survived. Look who survived this. We have what? We have, remember J.P. Morgan? Years ago, back around the turn of the century, they used to call them the robber barons. You ever hear that term? Look up in your history books, the robber barons. And now all you have is you have the robber barons with a fancier dress. You know, they're going to the prom, they look real pretty. You know, they got a fancier dress on, but they're still the same robber barons. And in this case, globalist bankers. And they're enslaving you. And you got very busy watching those shells thinking, better watch that 700 billion. Meanwhile, we're represented in this area by Barney Frank. What a total loser who went and, you know, a traitor. The guy deserves the rope and the necktie thing, you know? Why? Because I think that's what they do with traitors. When you're a traitor to your country, here's Barney Frank. And what's Barney Frank do? Well, I, luckily, I what? I bailed out the banks. You guys should see, I think we had a President Jackson. And on his tombstone, when you read his tombstone, it says, I killed the bank. Now, that guy's a great American. Now, Barney Frank said what? I stole money from the little people, and I gave it to my buddies on Wall Street. And what's important to know about this Wall Street bailout rescue plan thing is they're selling you that's based on subprime mortgages. All the subprime mortgages put together are only about $120, $140 billion, not $700. And by the way, the real number for the game they're playing on you is in the trillions. It's like five trillion plus. Plus you're giving power, okay, that never existed before in our Constitution to this person we're going to call a Treasury Secretary and you can't even take him to court when he cheats you? And he steals from you? And he robs from you? And meanwhile, Barney Frank did this? This is like Kerry and Kennedy with their what? With their um, cheats. Didn't they just change the bankruptcy laws? Took effect in 2006. You can't go bankrupt, but evidently Wall Street can. And when Wall Street does, you have to pay. When you go bankrupt, does Wall Street pay you? I guess you don't have Barney Frank working for you. You people got to, you know, talk to your Barneys. <laughs> so we have this thing. We've changed the name. No longer a bailout, everybody. It's a rescue plan. Isn't that much better? We've passed the rescue plan. And who did we rescue? We rescued the bankers. Because they might have been bad businessmen, but bad businessmen deserve more money. You know? They may have stolen from people, but that's okay because they need more money. Let's take AIG. You heard about AIG, and we're going to go over the story and what the problem was. It wasn't so much the, um, like I said, it's only about $140 billion for those, um, for those subprime mortgages that are out there, okay? You could, we could have bought all those stupid properties with, the, with less money than they authorized and stuff. But more importantly is that wasn't the problem. The problem was all the derivatives and the credit swaps that were going on, okay? And who are we bailing? We're bailing foreigners. Because who owns those treasury bills now that we print so many? Because we're in, how, by the way, viewers, you out there, if you don't have a dime, if you don't have a pot to urinate in, how can you lend money to somebody else? How can you bail anybody else out? Unless you let them use your pot. Wait a minute, you don't even have a pot. Think about it. Think about this. They're pulling this over on you, and you're in a very educated audience. Okay? You people took, you know, Economics 101. You understand some things, at least. You know, general ledger. Okay? Accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger. Let's just go right to basics. If I have no accounts receivable, or I have less than I need, okay, and my general ledger is negative and stuff, okay, tell me about the payables. But yet you believe this stuff, and you allow what? Barney Frank to go and steal from you, that traitor. You know, and tell you he's a hero. Who told you he's a hero? Pelosi. That's right, all you Democrats in the audience. Pelosi's your hero. She got elected to get rid of who? <laughs> to do what? You know, it's comedy because the, the populace basically, I don't know, maybe there's a soccer game today. And they have to go to the soccer game. They're too busy. Or their television show's on. Could be Judge Judy. We got to go home. Get, got to get there in time. Judge Judy's on, you know. Or it might be the NFL game or the NBA, ABA, CBA, whatever the thing. Meanwhile, they're stealing from you, they're stealing from your parents, and they're stealing from your children and their children's children.